Hello, my name is Sylvia from Sylvia Ray, and you're watching my channel. So the other day I was surprised with a trip to the Andy Warhol Museum. I, I was so excited. I haven't been to an art museum in so long and it's just so nice to be able to go to one and experience art. I wasn't able to film inside of the museum. That's only because they don't allow it. I want to be able to go back to the museum again, especially if I'm publicizing this video. I don't want to publicize a rule that I broke to a place that I want to go back to. I did do what I could though to try to kind of show certain parts of the experience without revealing the whole experience, but I did take pictures. Now let's start this off talking a little bit about Andy Warhol right if you don't know who he is he is an artiste of the 1950s 60s 70s a little bit about his childhood his parents came in from Slovakia they were immigrants and they raised Andy in Pittsburgh he grew up around a Great Depression he was very much surrounded by industrialism Pittsburgh's actually the capital of the steel industry if you don't know Andy Warhol was a pretty sickly child it caused him to stay home most of the time he had to skip school a lot he was pretty coddled by his mom so she took care of of him. I would argue that it made him sort of a shy child. Now since he was so confined to his bed, you know, he needed something to do. And I feel like, you know, usually artists in this period where they're not doing anything, they can't do anything. Art is usually the go-to. His brothers and his mom would, you know, teach him how to draw, trace images, print them out even. We can assume that this is where his interest in art started. Look at how convenient it is for it to start mildly snowing kind of raining even it's kind of snowing we'll see how long this takes before I head back inside so the Andy Warhol Museum is in Pittsburgh Pennsylvania and I would say the area was pretty artistic there was color everywhere this community center there was a whole mu uh, mural that I interviewed my man in front of which you can view in a second here when we went into the museum I remember seeing the couch I guess it was his couch there was a picture up top of him sitting in the couch and I really wanted to sit in the couch but I wanted to respect the piece you know so I didn't want to touch it but I touched it I just didn't sit in it you know Damn, it really is chilly out here. Oh shit, my nipples are getting like diamonds. Ooh, the echo. Can you tell where I am? Five bucks to whoever guesses it right. <laughs> One of the first pieces we saw was touch sensitive. So that was real fun. Like there was an actual art piece that he drew. However, the line work was recreated using 3D printing to create a textured form of it. You get to feel what he drew. Something else that I liked was the silver balloons. It was definitely more of an immersive experience. Now, I don't want to devalue whatever the deeper meaning is behind why he created this experience, right? But it just felt like it was aesthetic. And I feel like that was actually his purpose, you know? And this is something I've noticed about a lot of the pieces in the museum. The enfant terrible become grand old man of modern art. But would he reveal much of what is behind the enigmatic image? This is the first sort of major series of self-portraits for quite a long time. What prompted this one? Uh, well, I, it's just, I ran out of ideas. I also think it's interesting that like he hit the times perfect. Yeah. Like the late 50s, early 60s mm -hmm. to the 70s was like his real time to prosper. Mm -hmm. And like that was like when sexuality and and art yeah. was flourishing. The piece that I was talking about was with the faces and the um, the butterflies on the faces and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I like love those. that. Yes, like yes. the hand like those are interesting because they're like just a drawn image he was experimenting with the, the color part mm -hmm. real early how he varied his colors and they were like just strong colors like he didn't paint it as if he painted it how it looked mm -hmm. he painted it as how it looked to him and I, like i said in there mm -hmm. i think that if you're like 
someone that's colorblind mm -hmm. or something like that. You can still experience his art. Yeah, it's all high Exactly contrast. the same. He tried different things. Some worked, some didn't. Maybe there was a lot more thought put into some works than others. He even juxtaposed images next to each other that were printed the same way. And in turn, you know, when you try things out, something new comes about. That in itself can create a feeling. And people felt a lot of things looking at his works, right? They were trying to understand who he was as a person, how complex of a human being he was and trying to understand him through his art. Maybe how he talked, what he talked about. He was a very private person. So not everybody understands Warhol and his full complexity as a human being, right? It was only an idea, like it came out of their head how it came out yeah. and they don't care if it was correct, mm -hmm. if you will. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't need to be anything mm -hmm. except for what they imagined. Exactly. That's the true stamp of an artist <clears throat> that you're able to create something that isn't or that wasn't there before. Yeah. An idea. For it to come from you. Yeah. For you to be able to express it in the way that you imagined it. Yeah. Is important. Mm -hmm. And I think like some people even try to be obtuse and mm -hmm. obscure. Mm -hmm. But you can tell when someone's trying to be that versus a natural idea that they have. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty beautiful thing. One thing I was really excited about going into the museum was looking at the pieces that he practiced that ink block technique on, you know? So he would take ink and a pen and he would uh, trace an image on one side of a paper and then fold it in half. And then he would blot that ink on the other half of the paper and it would create intricate line work, so to speak. It's very beautiful. It gave it a very textured feel. Like it gave the work personality and it was very unique. It was like a fingerprint, you know, it's hard. That's hard to replicate. And this was through his career as a graphic designer before he became a very popular fine artist. <laughs> I think that with mass duplication of a work, of a piece of art, of a certain thing, it almost has you questioning the value of it. If I can replicate this thing over and over and over again, how valuable is it really? Is it really that unique? And in terms of uniqueness, how does that determine something's value? Why does a rarity determine something's value? If you really think about it, right, there's a beauty in forcing you to look at something over and over and over again. Even making it a little different and putting it side by side, it forces you to look at the differences and understand how things look at different perspectives. I think it was incredibly innovative to be able to express yourself in this way or create a piece of art in this way. It really makes you think about how we even value consumerism because that's really the main theme of what Andy made art about. He was really infatuated with consumerism. Another thing I really enjoyed was when I saw Keith Haring's Elephant. I didn't do a lot of research on Keith Haring but after I left the museum, I did. And a lot of Andy's later works also, the way he used color, I would say it's reminiscent of cubism, which is a genre of art that existed the era right before Andy came into the art world and did his thing. Also, he experimented with acid. He was kind of experimenting with how oxidation affects color in a way. And this is incredibly interesting because there is a skill to manipulating such a material that is incredibly unpredictable, right? You don't know how the colors are gonna disperse. I don't know, I've never done that medium before. Maybe I should on this channel, let me know that would be cool to experiment with right but it really is not easy to get what you want and it's easy to pursue mediums when you are incredibly open to whatever outcome comes i think there's a beauty to that as well i think to understand warhol is to understand that there is something therapeutic about just letting things happen especially when you consider in his earlier life that he had anxiety and art was perhaps this outlet, you know, a way for him to let go and just let things be. And I think this is what makes him incredibly versatile as an artist as well. Later 
on in the day, we did paint some eggs. It was like watercolor eggs. It's pretty cool. I wish we would have gotten a chance to screen print, but that part of the workshop was closed, so couldn't do that. But maybe next time I will. We also went into the shop right after that, and that was really cool too. We found a lot of interesting and strange things. It was totally my vibe. I wanted literally <gasps> everything in the store, all the books they had, all the trinkets. There was a lot of Andy stuff, Basquiat stuff, Keith Haring stuff, and a bunch of other artists that fit the vibe of, you know, that group of strange people, I guess. Artists are strange. My man and I left there with a cow magnet his piece with the cows you know and a Basquiat puzzle it was like a it was like a painting but in a puzzle you know when we left the museum there was also a piece of paper on his car it was just a blank piece of paper that says please pay eight dollars on your way out which you know if you think about it you know if you believe there are still good people in this world then I guess you would leave a piece of paper like that but we didn't because it was too easy to just leave. We didn't have to pay when we came in. There was nobody at the booth. So like the fact that they would expect us to pay, which is, it was weird, you know? We ate some buffalo pizza at the Iron Born Pizza. Yeah, that was pretty good. We also had caramelized onion sauce with these homemade chips. I assume they were homemade because they were super seasoned, super irregular shaped and very delicious. I got some cookies and cream bubble tea and some random person gave my man a flower. Let's do this. Wait. Um, this man just gave... That was for you, baby. Okay. Damn. I'm getting the play, baby. You ain't out. He said he's getting the play. The hell? We also ate at August Wilson Park, and that was my favorite part because it was very nice to look over the view. I mean, there were a lot of trees in the way, but if you think about it, it was still nice to sit there and eat together at this park secluded away from everybody and just hanging out. August Wilson is apparently a playwright. So that was cool to, you know, read some of the quotes that were on there and learn about them. It's very interesting to see everything and to understand how, how geniuses are made in art, you know? Like nobody really understood Warhol fully. We all understand that he's a complex human being, but I feel like that's all there is to know. It leaves you thinking about the art. It allows for there to be some mystery and the mystery is left for you to figure out. So, <laughs> so that's that, you know? I found him really interesting. I think I'm pretty complex. Maybe I can make some crazy art and change the world someday, I don't know. We'll see. Be cool to create my own genre. I feel like there are so many talented artists out there now though, you know? It's time to close off. My nipples are hard. So. Bye. <laughs>